Good evening folks, this is Dr. Paul. Thank you very much for tuning to our channel today. Today I want to talk a few minutes about uh, Digitalis. Digitalis is uh, usually used in the treatment of heart failure and uh, there's a very frequently used inotropic agent. For the last 200 years, I mean, we have been using this medication now. It's available all over the world. Uh, so Digitalis glycosides and they are most commonly used inotropic agents and uh, they are very very important uh, in that because they increase the myocardial contractility and they also improve LV function increasing the cardiac output and they also increase renal perfusion now the beneficial effect of uh, digitalis glycosides in patients with heart failure complicated by atrial fibrillation has been well documented so when there is heart failure and atrial fibrillation, digitalis is a great help to deal with uh, such patients. So when patients come with heart failure and uh, you give them digitalis, and it, it, it improves their hemodynamic performance. So in this video, I want to talk about digitalis toxicity. Before that, I want to talk about uh, uh, the main features of this medication because understanding of its uh, physiology pharmacology helps you to understand how to treat with the toxicity so digitalis is a cardiac glycoside it's an inotropic agent and how do you administer this medication you can give this medication either intravenously or orally but intravenous route is preferred route and patient with supraventricular tachyarrhythmia the fast ventricular rate, they respond well if you give by intravenous route. And usually you, you, do, you give a dose of 0.5 milligrams over like a 10 minutes period. And many patients uh, might require one milligram for full effect, but in patients with a, a small body frame or renal insufficiency, you need to decrease the dose of the medication. Now let me tell you some very, very important points here has a half-life of 36 to 48 hours. It is excreted mainly by kidneys. So this is a very, very important point. So digitalis is mainly excreted by the kidneys. If you know that point, when you see a patient with renal insufficiency and digoxin, should always get prepared for a digoxin toxicity in that patient. And there are also medications which will decrease the level of digoxin in the body, like cholesteramine. So cholestermine reduces the level of digoxin. So on the other hand, needless to say, there are medications that will increase the level of digoxin like uh, quinidine and uh, verapamil, amiodarone. These medications, they increase the level of uh, uh, digoxin in the body and uh, uh, with the risk of causing digoxin toxicity. So when the patient is on quinidine, verapamil and uh, amiodarone, you should always uh, think of possible occurrence of digitalis toxicity. Now, I, I hate numbers, but sometimes they are important to remember. Digitalis intoxication can occur up to 30% of patients, folks. I mean, if you don't remember 30, at least remember, it's a very common thing in patients who are hospitalized for heart failure. Digitalis toxicity is common. They might present with uh, nausea, vomiting, drowsiness, headache, insomnia, altered color vision, arrhythmia. When you see those things, you should always think about digital toxicity. So the things like patient says, like I have nausea, vomiting, anorexia, malaise, I am drowsy, headache, insomnia. You might think they are so non-specific symptoms, but if they say I have altered color vision, I mean your red flag should go up. Altered color vision is a very, very characteristic symptom we see in digitalis toxicity. And almost all known cardiac arrhythmias can be caused by digitalis uh, toxicity, starting from, you name it. Um, many times, if the patient has hypokalemia, that only aggravates the digitalis toxicity. So that's an important point again. Digitalis toxicity is worsened by hypokalemia. And many times they present with uh, arrhythmias like a junctional tachycardia, the first or second or third degree heart blocks, the paroxysmal atrial tachycardia with block. So, digoxin toxicity 
um, you, it can present with arrhythmias, a very, very important point. And how do you know that you treated a digitalis toxicity? The patient's problems should go away, the symptoms should go away, the arrhythmia should go away. And the severity, the, the digitalis toxicity should be treated with the immune um, uh, fragmented immunoglobulins, basically digibind. I will tell about that in a bit. So get these points, folks. Any dysarthemia that occurred during digoxin therapy should be attributed to drug, to this drug until proven otherwise. So if you see any dysarthemia in a patient with digoxin, your accusing finger should be pointed to digoxin. That's it. Any dysarthemia that occurred during digoxin therapy should be attributed to digoxin until proven otherwise. I mean, it can be anything, ventricular bigeminae, it could be first degree heart block, second degree heart block, third degree heart block. You should say, is digoxin causing this? You should always ask that question, folks. The other important thing is like, um, when you suspect digoxin toxicity, you should order a trough level. Now, that is about digoxin toxicity, there is digoxin poisoning also. Digoxin poisoning happens when a toddler or somebody else like uh, accidentally injects digoxin. For example, a toddler goes to his grandparents' drug cabin and he opens up digoxin and uh, ingests like 10-15 pills. That's digoxin poisoning. When you get a patient like that, you should immediately do gastric lavage. You need to empty their stomach using gastric lavage. So that's an important point. It doesn't matter when they ingested, you need to do gastric lavage. And then the other thing is activated charcoal. You need to give a lot of amounts of activated charcoal to decrease the absorption of digoxin in the stomach. And in an advanced heart block, like uh, uh, if things are getting so bad, you need to think about whether you could use atropine or ventricular pacing. The other thing is using the digoxin immunoglobulins, F -A digoxin FAB, that is digibind. Basically digibind is uh, they give digoxin to sheep and the sheep will produce antibodies against digoxin. So t they take these fragmented immunoglobulins and they prepared digibind. So basically digibind is antibodies to digoxin. So when you give these antibodies to patient, these antibodies will immediately act, that they bind to digoxin and they remove digoxin from the circulation. So that's a very, very advanced form of uh, treatment we have. So those are the most important points I wanted to share with you today about digoxin. Please remember these points that are very, very important, not only for examinations, but also in your medical practice. Thank you very much.